Inverted fullbacks are one of the most common tactical methods used in the game today, but why are so many managers looking to adopt this idea, and just what does bringing the fullback into midfield actually gain teams? Well, the use of the inverted fullback changes from manager to manager. For example, Mikel Arteta's Arsenal have used a method where they bring one fullback into midfield and one fullback attaches onto the back two in defence to create a back three. Ange Postecoglou at Celtic and so far at Spurs has brought both of the fullbacks inside to sit next to the defensive midfielder. Meanwhile, Pep Guardiola's Manchester City have used different variants throughout his time there, whether it be using one in midfield and one in defence, or both of them in midfield at one time, and this is all down to the profile of players they have at their disposal. For example, Ben White and Kyle Walker are much more comfortable playing as a right centre half in a back three. Ben White has played there a lot for Brighton before Arsenal signed him, and Kyle Walker plays his best football for his country in that position. So whilst on the team sheet it looks like they're playing as a right back, they're much more familiar in these areas that they tend to play in on the pitch. So just why are the top managers doing this? Well in past seasons we've seen teams use the 4-3-3 with the use of the fullbacks being the main width holders, with the wingers coming narrow to attack the box, and this is something that Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool became notorious for, having Trent Alexander-Arnold and Andrew Robertson, who are both brilliant crossers of the ball, really high on that last line of attack. However, the amount of running that's required and the distances that are needed to be covered when the ball is lost high are quite considerable. And this could explain why one of Trent Alexander-Arnold's main criticisms is that he was struggling to defend spacing behind during counter-attacks. And Jurgen Klopp has noticed this and therefore has decided to bring Trent into midfield whilst his team's in possession. And this maximises his passing capabilities, whilst also giving him shorter distances to cover when they need to transition from attack to defence following the turnover of possession. But Andrew Robertson on the other side has been playing as that third centre-half, but he doesn't have the same technical profile as a Trent Alexander-Arnold, therefore it is overall hindering his his impact and performance in games, showing just why you need the right profiles to play this way. And teams are still using the 4-3-3 now, but the midfield construction now is a lot different. Most of the time we see a deeper midfielder with two more offensive midfielders ahead of them, meaning that when the team has possession and they want to get more bodies into the last line of attack, they can push the two number eights on into the final third, with the wingers becoming the natural width holders as usual, and therefore they can have five players across the back line, meaning that they can go man for man with the opposition's back line and look to stretch it to create gaps between each defender. But then pushing the number eights on into these attacking areas and leaving the centre defensive midfielder on his own leaves too much space between between the attacking and midfield lines, especially in the wider areas. So there's been an emphasis on bringing the fullbacks inside the pitch to play as midfielders, to create a more structured shape in possession. And this is to effectively stop teams from having easy counter-attacking opportunities when a ball is turned over. And whilst this idea is definitely to benefit teams who want to play possession or football, most of the uses of inverted fullbacks are actually to develop the team out of possession as well as in it. This block of players after a turnover of possession not only has the numbers in it, but it also has the compactness and distances. But in possession, it's really hard to mark inverted fullbacks too. If they don't mark the fullback as he comes inside to midfield, then you're giving a very technically gifted and intelligent footballer the time and the space to operate freely on the ball. However, if the opposition team's winger wants to come inside to mark the fullback in midfield, then it means they cannot track the other team's winger, meaning they can create an ever-present 1v1 situation against the opposition's fullback. However, this method isn't doable for all teams. It takes the right profile of player to play this sort of role. For example, Zinchenko at Arsenal is a brilliant passer of the ball, he's calm in possession, and he can set the tempo really well, whilst also having the intelligence and the overall experience of actually playing in midfield to carry out this role to an elite level. So the question is, are inverted fullbacks becoming a necessity for top possessional based teams, or could this just be another tactical phase in the ever-changing cycle of football?